So we ask ourselves, I'm done with the history lesson, I think. I want to get to where you and I are living. We ask ourselves, well, how does the law then relate to me as a believer in Jesus? But I hope you've at least gotten the proportions here. 2,000, almost 600 years from Adam and the promise to him before a law even comes into existence. 400 years after the covenant with Abram. And unfortunately, most of us, when we think of the Old Covenant, when we think of the Old Testament, we're imagining as though it's the entire stretch of time from Adam all the way until Jesus came, that that's all the Old Testament. But for the historically the biggest chunk of time, the people of God did not live under the law. They lived with only promise. So what was then the purpose of the law? Why would God finally introduce this thing called the law, do's and don'ts, rules and regulations? And so I'm going to offer you basically three main reasons why the law was given. And eventually today we're going to talk about what can you say when the law tells you you're guilty. That's the best part. But of course I'm saving it to the end so you don't leave until I am done. (laughs) First reason that God gave the law was, I guess we could say, to catalog sin, to create an inventory so that nobody would be confused about, is that right or is that wrong? We would know this is wrong. And because I now know that coveting is something I'm not supposed to do, but lo and behold, I find myself coveting, I am able to say, whoo, that's sin, whoo, that's sin, that's sin, that's sin. And maybe you've noticed since you've come to Christ, your awareness of sin is kind of amped up a little bit. You thought you knew the difference between right and wrong beforehand. Now that you've come to Christ, it's like, gee, I can't even do that or that or that. Or, oh my goodness. Or is this only me? Well, generally it can happen. I mean, you might not have to dance about it, but I didn't know what a sinner I was until I was forgiven is kind of the feeling. Well, The more sins that have been cataloged, the less confusion there is about anything that I do. And I can't really beg off on these generalized statements that people sometimes try to offer. You know, well, I mean, what about all the good people in the world? Okay, well, let's define the word good. And if there isn't any definition about right and wrong, and that's a sin, and that's a sin, and that's a sin, and we only have sort of a vague idea that basically I think for the most part more so than the other way, I try to kind of lean in a good direction. That's really different than, let's not talk about the good people, which I'm sure all of you are, uh, but, but let's talk about people hmm, who have never done anything wrong. That's a very small subset of the human population. Good is fairly large. It includes you. Of course, you would never place yourself at the top of the list, but just You know, good starts with you and moves forward, and you're glad to get in, doesn't it? You ever notice that? But I can't say I'm sinless. And not a human alive can say they're sinless. I have sinned, and I know I've sinned because the law tells me this is sin. 